this is the Triumph Thruxton RS and it's the fastest, most powerful, sharpest handling Triumph in the modern classic lineup. And in this video, we're gonna give it a full and thorough review. Now, as with everything you look at, uh, motorcycles included, um, you look at the pictures of the motorcycle and you read the specs and uh, you sort of make up your mind what that motorbike might be like. Now this motorcycle is uh, no exception. Uh, looking at it on the specs, it's got a very short wheelbase of 1,415 millimeters, a very steep rake, so that's the steepness of the forks there, 22.8 degrees, and the trail is only 92 millimeters. So before I got on this bike, I thought, well, it's bound to be twitchy and it's bound to be, um, a little bit unstable but after riding it 200 meters that isn't the case at all and I really don't know how Triumph have managed it but this is a very sharp handling bike but not in the least bit twitchy so uh, it's a very nice bike to ride and it takes the corners beautifully. Now Triumph themselves say this bike's got all the hallmarks of the original Cafe Racer um, but with more power better handling and a contemporary style. And I definitely agree with that statement. This bike is fantastic. It's got more power, it's got great handling and the styling is fantastic. You look at this bike and you just go, wow, that is a really, really pretty bike. So the Thruxton RS is the sort of bike that you can really take by the scruff of the neck and throw it through the corners and it will grip and it's fantastic. You can get your knee down on a bike like this. Um, unfortunately, it's been a bit wet uh, this week. Uh, we've just had a thaw from the snow, so we've had to take it a little bit easy, but saying that, you can still take it around the corners pretty briskly. Um, so it's, it's such a sharp handling bike, but in, in a very good way. So Triumph have got this right in terms of its geometry for cornering, it's spot on. So before we carry on with the video, um, we'd really appreciate if you'd leave us a subscribe and a like and a comment on the video, um, especially subscribe. Um, it helps us out massively. And we'll be able to give you better content um, and sooner as well. So as soon as the latest bikes come out, um, we'll be on the press launches, giving you the best content that you're after. This 1200cc Bonneville engine produces 103 brake horsepower or 105 PS, which peaks at 7,500 RPM, and 112 newton meters of torque, which peaks at 4,250 RPM. But it feels so powerful and accelerates blindingly fast. This really is a quick motorcycle. Um, and when you accelerate, it's got a lovely deep tone to it. It sounds fantastic. It pulls like nothing else. I mean, it really is fast. It feels just as fast as the Rocket 3. Um, so if you want a blindingly quick motorcycle that handles very sharply, uh, you really can't go wrong with this. Got Brembo brakes on this bike. You've got double discs on the front. And as you'd expect, these are really, really good brakes. The stopping power is incredible. You've got Olin piggyback shocks on the rear, um, which are fully adjustable. And you've got Showa suspension forks on the front. Um, these are fully adjustable as well. And they've done them in this um, yellowy gold color, which everyone seems to do at the moment. I think they look better in silver, but that's just nitpicking. Now we've found the gear change on this and all the Bonneville uh, engines to be very good indeed. It goes up and down the gearbox nicely and smoothly and uh, without any problems at all. Nice light clutch feel there.
So you've got a seat height of 810 millimeters on this bike. Now I'm between six foot one and six foot two, and you can gauge by looking at me how big this bike is. Um, it's not majorly big, so I think for someone between five foot six and five foot ten, this bike would feel perfect for you. Now, if you're above that height, it's still perfectly easy to ride. It just might look a bit small to other people, but it does feel a little bit on the small side. Now, the one thing I did say about this bike is it's small. Uh, it's by no means a big motorcycle, and I'm six foot three, and this is the riding position for me. Yet, the distance from my seat to my hands is quite long. My legs are obviously nice and bent for the riding position that you would need on a sports bike. Um, but it feels fine on top of it. I feel like you're sitting on top of something rather than in the motorcycle. Um, you can get your chest down, no problem at all. Get out of the wind a little bit. So it's a good riding position. Um, it feels bigger than it looks. Now the Thruxton RS comes with the race derived Metzeller Racetech RR tyres. They're 17 inches on the front and the rear. Um, they've not got a lot of tread on them. They're almost slicks. Um, they're really, really grippy in the dry and um, you want to be a little bit careful in the wet because obviously you've not got a lot of tread. But these tyres are absolutely superb. As with all the Bonnevilles, you have a tubular steel cradle chassis, um, the radiators at the front, obviously, and it does get a lot of muck into it um, with such a small mudguard. So most people will probably only ride a bike like this in the fine weather anyway. Um, you've got 120 millimeter travel on the suspension. You've got the upside down forks at the front and the twin shock piggybacks at the rear. And um, as Darcy said, it, it absorbs the bumps very well. Um, we do have some terrible roads in England and it handles, handles them very well. Um, but the road holding is phenomenal. So if you're really thrashing this bike and you've got some decent roads, uh, it grips the roads very well indeed. Now you've got plenty of room to move about on this seat. And when you're accelerating, you can get your bum right back to the edge of the seat and you're not worried about flying off. Um, and the seats are also very grippy, which is, um, inspires a lot of confidence. So the 1200cc Bonneville engine that's in the Thruxton RS is a little bit more advanced than the rest of the Bonneville engines. Um, you've got a low inertia, lightweight crank, balance shafts and a clutch. Um, you've also got magnesium cam covers and you've got uh, thin walled engine covers and all of this, including the high compression pistons, produces 20% less inertia, um, which obviously means that the engine will rev freer. Everything on this Thruxton RS looks such good quality. I love these rims, they're very beautiful. And this triple clamp here with this lovely thick metal looks amazing. Uh, and you've got the twin dials at the front. You've got analog speedometer and a rev counter. Now, interestingly, I was riding um, along a sort of dual carriageway, an open road, coming into a village and somebody flashed me to say something. And usually uh, there's a warning. Um, as I came into the village, there was a speed, speed camera from the police. Uh, I wasn't going fast at the time, which is fine. Obviously, I don't go very fast. I keep to the speed limits. Um, but looking at the speedometer, I got it to 30 and I thought oh fine everything's fine and it wasn't till I'd got a few miles outside the village when I realized that actually I was looking at 30 on the rev counter so the rev counter goes up 10 20 30 40 50 60 and so on uh, obviously 30 is 3000 rpm um, so at first glance that looks like the speedometer so it would be better if it just said one two three four five six and then you can put the three noughts on the end yourself so obviously if you're used to the bike you wouldn't do that but um, when you jump on a different bikes all the time as we do that looked like the speedometer so hopefully i haven't got a speeding ticket now like all triumphs you've got a usb port under the seat um, we think it'd be better if it was somewhere up here along the headstock um, and then you could plug in your phone or sat nav very easily without having to fiddle about, but at least you've got the USB port. These bar end mirrors 
are very good. The rearward visibility is about 70% of the road for me. If you're a bit shorter, uh, not quite so wide, you'd probably see all of the road behind you. Uh, it's much better than when the mirrors are mounted further in. Um, so I was quite impressed with that. So normally we don't like modes on bikes, but it's very good and simple on this bike. You've got three different modes, road, rain and sport and it's easy to change them. On the left handlebar there's a mode button and the mode won't change until you pull the clutch in. Um, but the difference between the modes is um, very good. It's good to have a rain mode because obviously if it's raining with this amount of power you don't want to uh, be slipping around with all that power. Um, and sport mode in particular is absolutely crazy so the old man will go into a little bit more detail about sport mode. Now another nice thing about this bike, it's all quite simple. You've just got your starter switch here and your hazard this side. And on the other side, you've got your lights, your mode, your information button, your indicators and your horn. And that's it. Uh, and that's all you need. I mean, it's a motorcycle. You don't want to spend time, I don't anyway, looking at screens and scrolling through things and going through different menus and changing settings. Um, just get on and ride. And surely, as I said, with the three modes, it's more than enough and uh, you can just press the button and go and you don't want to spend 20 minutes changing something I'm sure. Um, so I don't know what you think about that, let us know, but um, we're not fans of modes as we've said many times, but on this they're good because you need the rain mode to sort of dumb down all that power when it's uh, slippery, which is great. The road mode for everyday use is fine. In sport mode, this bike absolutely flies and it's fun to ride. So um, it's probably better to keep it in sport as much as you can so that you're used to that way because it's better to come down than up. And the only problem with the mode could also be that if you forget you're in sport and you think you're in rain and you open it up to go up somewhere and you think I, I didn't realize that I was in sport and the road's very wet so you just have to be a little bit careful of that and make sure you check which mode you're in before you set off. The exhaust has a nice tone to it uh, it's not mega loud and it wouldn't be because it has to meet all the regulations um, but obviously you can swap that out and get a more racy pipe which would sound much nicer and much louder if you wanted to. So the Thruxton RS starts at £13,000 in jet black, which is what we've got here. And there's another colour option, which is matte storm grey and silver ice, which is £13,350. So obviously you're paying £350 extra. I think it looks better in jet black. Um, and of course there's other options and stuff which would make the bike a little bit more expensive. Now Darcy wasn't so keen on the gold anodised forks. Uh, with the matching sort of piggybacks here. I actually quite like it on this bike. I think it sort of gives it a little hint of colour uh, against the black and the sort of silver or silver and chromey type of uh, metals. Um, but I get his point. I mean, usually we don't particularly like the gold anodised forks because you see them on pretty much everything these days. So um, silver ones might look better, but yeah, in this case, I think they look nice. As with all our reviews, um, we give you the main specs on the bike and really concentrate more on the feel of the bike and how it goes, accelerates, handles, etc. Um, you can read all the specs on Triumph's website, it's very comprehensive, so there's no point in us rattling off a ton of figures and boring you to death. Um, it's best to sort of study those things yourself, um, but as I said, we've given you the sort of the information that you need to know what this bike actually feels like to ride and what it sounds like, etc. So that's the important thing from a review, so hopefully you've got that out of it. At higher RPMs, you do feel a very small amount of vibration, uh, but it's nothing to get worried about. So if you're looking for a blindingly fast, sharp handling motorcycle with a retro look, 
look no further because this is a very good motorcycle indeed. Um, personally, I would rather ride this than some of the modern looking bikes. Um, it's much more stylish, um, but each to his own, you know, we all have different tastes. Um, so yeah, if you want a bike like this, you will not be disappointed whatsoever. Now, if you already follow our channel, you'll know that we review all sorts of motorbikes and don't forget to sort of go to our videos tab and scroll down and you'll see all the reviews we've done. But if you're a Triumph fan, the next bike that we're test riding is the Triumph T120. So that looks beautiful. We're looking forward to riding that one. So thanks for watching the video. Um, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. Um, leave a like on the video and tell us in the comments below what you think of the Thruxton RS. Um, make sure you check out our t-shirts. Um, it really helps us out and supports the channel. Um, you can see them in the carousel below and there's more on the website. Um, but all the money that we make from that goes back into the content. So um, like recently we bought a new mic, um, we'll be upgrading our equipment and stuff like that. So um, it's gonna help you guys out as well.